Hello everyone, today what's going to be happening is we're going to be talking about Sabretooth curriculum and why it is a must read for all educators. So first off, are you tired of boring old textbooks that lack any humor or relevance to you? Are you looking for a book that will make lasting impact on you and will be difficult to forget? Do you want to come away with a better understanding of curriculum design and understanding by design model? Well, Sabretooth curriculum happens to be the book for you. So Sabretooth Curriculum, it was written in 1939 by J. Abner Pettywell, and it still does a great job addressing large issues in education over 80 years later. <coughs> Through clever use of satire, it makes it very difficult to argue with the claims that are made just because when you actually are faced with the situations in the book, it's so ridiculous when you actually hear what things are doing, and it relates directly to still practices that we're using this very day. So it's really hard to not laugh when you're faced with those situations. And it does a brilliant job of showing the importance of understanding by design and illustrates the flaws associated with designing tasks first, then thinking about the end goals and the evidence that students need to show us um, to reach the learning goals. So. One of the first things I want to do is just uh, introduce myself. My name is Edward Lee and I'm a high school math teacher. This year I'm going into my sixth year of teaching. Uh, above there's a picture of my wife and myself. We've been married for about three years and dating for ten. And um, one of the things that I've started to notice is that many things do not add up when it comes to present day education. Namely, why are we teaching things that students will not use in the future? Shouldn't the focus of education be on the application of learning and transfer? And what ways can present day education be changed to meet the needs of our students? So, one of the things in our book, Wiggins and Mathai, 2006, they said it best with the following. Authentic performance requires real context, requires judgment and innovation, ask the students to do the subject, and replicated key challenging situations in which the adults are truly tested. This is something that is constantly brought up within this book, and it's also a hot topic this very day. What kind of things do students need to be able to do? Do they need to be able to just perform this on a test, or should they be able to apply what they've learned to a situation and then draw something from those conclusions that are made? That's one of the big arguments that's happening in education. It was happening within this book uh, in 1939 when it was written. So it's something that's still an issue to this very day. So the funny thing about it is this entire book takes part, uh, place in a bar in Tijuana. Okay, In this bar in Tijuana, there's a doctor. He is a, uh, a doctorate in education. And what happens is he goes into a bar in Tijuana where he's running away from his wife. She's at a sewing convention uh, in San Diego. And he decides to go to Tijuana and spend seven days at a bar. Uh, there, he meets a former master's in education student who argues that this is the longest bar in the world. When he's prodded why, the former student just said it was the longest that he's ever seen without any justification and says it has to be the longest bar because everybody says that's so, and it has always been so. When he's prodded, uh, he really doesn't have anything to say, and he just says uh, that is the truth. That was all the former student has ever known and has just accepted it as so. And the same thing with education. Um, this leads into the major premise of the book. Just because education has always been that way and that it is all that is known currently, that does not mean that it's the right way to go about things. And that is ever true in this changing world. Okay, so when they're in this bar, they start to talk about the history of education and starting it, and Dr. Pettywell gives him five full days of lectures on this guy, New Fist Hammermaker, okay? And New Fist Hammermaker, he's an expert in UBD, and uh, he actually goes through all the stages when he's developing education. So first off, he's one of the most intelligent people of the time. He discovers how to do all the things before everybody else, and then he sees a need for education as the times are starting to change. Change. More people are coming around and they need education. So using uh, uh, understanding by design, he first identifies what the basic needs of his people were. This is stage one uh, of UBD, identify the desired results. So the cavemen, they needed food in the form of fish, clothing in the form of wool, and then they needed safety in terms of fire to keep the tigers away. And thus, the title Sabertooth Tiger Curriculum. So, 
there's a picture of Mulan and Mushu, and there's a woolly uh, uh, horse. So UBD and the and New Fist stage two. Then he determined the way to meet those needs was to teach everybody the three core subjects. This is stage two, determining acceptable evidence. So he goes through and he says, well, if they need fish, the way they can do it is they need to learn how to, or we, they need to show that they can bare hand fish grab. And to get clothes, woolly horse clubbing. They need to club the horses. And then saber tooth uh, tiger scaring with fire. And here's a picture of the kids there learning how to do it. And there's Mulan, and she pulls out Ariel by the tail when she's going for it. So she gets a big fish. UBD in the uh, New Fist Stage 3. Through this entire process, New Fist Hammer Maker used each of the steps of design and UBD to create an engaging and effective set of lessons courses for his students. This is Stage 3 Plan, Learning, Experiences, and Instruction. It goes to highlight what Wiggins and Mathai 2006 said, only by having specified the desired results can we focus on the content, methods, and activities most likely to achieve those results. And here's a picture of the caveman learning how to make fire. Um, so here's a, a nice quote. Sometimes you have to get rid of the lessons and activities that you really like. They could be irrelevant to the learning goals. This is from one of the videos that we had to watch in our class from Halverson in 2012. And uh, she's arguing that the issue with planning lessons first and then trying to match them to goals is that you get to hold on to these lessons and you really, really want those lessons to work well. Like for example, one of the things that she brings up is in English class, everybody wants to use the hot topic of, uh, or the hot topics of the day. Now that might not be the exact lesson you wanna to use to meet your learning goals. And that's the same thing when we're looking at this. So there's a picture of SpongeBob and he's trying to, uh, he forgets everything but how to be fancy and that's kind of the meme down below. So with that, phase two saber tooth uh, curriculum, it actually tackles that same exact topic uh, in that quote before. Even though New Fist created a curriculum that everyone greatly benefited from, as the time started to change, it started to phase out. The water became murky, so it became impossible to catch fish barehanded. The horses all ran away after seeing all of their friends being clubbed, and the antelope started to move in. And lastly, the tigers became extinct, and bears who were not afraid of fire moved in. So, all of the things that they were teaching in education at the time started to lose their relevance because there was no more. There was no more uh, from. Uh, no more need to catch fish by hand because of the murky water. Uh, no more clubbing of horses. But what they did is they just kept pushing that same education and those practices. So just as it has been done today, the elder teachers held fast to the curriculum that they learned as children and have been teaching for that same time. And what they did is they pushed super hard to keep this curriculum for various reasons. After that, big companies were created and it took over all the fishing rights, hunting rights, fur trade. And what happened is even the available fish, available things as things were starting to move were getting taken over by big business. Um, big business started to push people out of their jobs, take their land rights and all that, and the tribe became more of a welfare state. That did not have any jobs for its people. And the jobs that were provided were available did not feed their families. They only got one and a half fish per day uh, per uh, working adult when they needed five for each family of four. So what happened as a result of this is private schools arose to teach students how to use the new methods of uh, catching fish in murky water by using nets, uh, how to catch antelopes because you can't, they're too fast, you can't catch up to them and club them, so you have to set antelope snares. And then they had to learn how to create pits to, uh, for the bears to fall in, and then they can come over and kill the bears while they're in the pits without being mauled by them. So the private schools started to change with the times where the older schools held fast to what they've learned and said this educational practice is still valid to this day. And um, this is the big connection to education. All of those who could not afford the private schools continued to go to public schools and were taught the ide ideology and the art behind fish grabbing, woolly horse clubbing, and tiger scaring, even though those things were no longer around. Um, and as a result, none of the students were able to find jobs afterwards. In response to this, the government decided to step in and try to find a task for them to do. So they gave them a rock pile to take up their time. 
uh, the kids were just sitting around throwing rocks at each other with all their spare time. And you had all of these people who graduated from school. They didn't have any tasks. So there was a big uprising where they were like, we need to have jobs. And so what the second person did is they decided to create a university that uh, for all of these kids to go to school because they haven't learned the proper method of all of those three tasks beforehand. So they created a university to go and teach them the same useless things that they've been learning in school all these years. And what this leads us to is uh, the I, uh, why we need Common Core I Choose C idea um, that Gutierrez in 2016, she made a YouTube video where the student went to enter into the job market and had no marketable skills that were relevant to the ever-changing workplace. And what happened is these kids, they were just unemployed, they had nothing to go for, and education is not caught up to help them out. Now, one of the things that I saw that was uh, really interesting is this was the justification from teachers not to change with the time. Um, and this is from the book. Let me see if I can go back, go back, go back. No, go back. Okay. We don't teach fish grabbing to grab fish. We teach it to develop generalized agility, which can never be developed by mere training. We don't teach horse clubbing to club horses. We teach it to develop a generalized strength in the learner where he can never get it from a prosaic and specialized thing as antelope snare setting. We don't teach tiger scaring to scare tigers. We teach it for the purpose of giving that noble courage which carries over into all affairs of life and which can never come from so base an activity as bear killing. This is one of the things that really resonated with me as I was reading through it because what happened is all of these tasks and these things that people were teaching, um, just like today, there are many subjects that these kids, they don't see any relevance into it. They don't see uh, the purpose in doing so because they're not going to be using those in the future um, for specific things, such as poetry, uh, uh, using specific theorems in geometry and things like that. And um, it was really resonated with me because uh, every single time I come to a subject, I'll have a kid come up and ask me, what is this used for? And I'll talk about how it's for a skill, which teaching skills is something that's still relevant. But in this, they were teaching the kids things that didn't even exist anymore. They were teaching them how to scare tigers that were extinct. They were teaching them how to club woolly horses that weren't there. They were teaching them how to grab fish in a pond that had no fish in it. Those things were just so humorous that it makes it so obvious when you're thinking about this. So what really goes to set this book apart and why should you read this? And here are the reasons why. Given the satirical nature of the book, it is just such an enjoyable book to read. It will fly by and you will laugh consistently and constantly throughout. While you're laughing, it's going to be very apparent just how far off education of present day really is although it may be improving in some areas. Um, and finally, you will walk away with a concrete example and many concrete examples of how understanding by design works and why it works so well. Thank you very much for your time. Go out and purchase this book. You will not regret it.